in our last video, we poured the concrete into our cardboard tube forms, and I left a little bit of a nervous cliffhanger by saying it looks like some of that concrete is shrinking. Wonder how it's going to pan out. Today's video is all about the show and tell. We are going to unwrap these columns, take the cardboard tubes off, the forms off, do a lot of sledgehammer work cleaning up messy concrete on the ground, clean up our work site, but most importantly, stretch some string lines across the tops of these piers and see just how level did we end up getting these 18 piers across an 800 square foot area. Let's go. This one was an absolute blowout. This is the one that we made the concrete way too wet. Went through the tube form and started coming out the earth. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get much of this broken up, <laughs> but I'm gonna try. Uh, yeah, this is definitely the worst. This is amateur hour in its finest. All right, so the crazy one wasn't that bad to bust up, thank goodness. And from here on out, it gets easier because we didn't go crazy on any others. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the process, get the sledgehammer, bust off the molds, break up any concrete that's around the area, then get my razor blade utility knife, start to cut off the cardboard and unwrap the tubes. Enjoy the show. Pretty much all the cardboard has been cleaned off. If there's any left, it's really close down to the soil level. And I know that'll eventually kind of get wet, rot, fall off, or I'll get at it later when I really want to get picky. 
It is later in the evening today. We have shade in the area, which is so nice. What I want to do next is go ahead and take down the batter boards. They've served their purpose. They're not going to be used for the layout and continuation building of this project because that is going to be done just a different way. What I'm going to do once the batter boards are apart is figure out a way to tie some string lines onto the piers and I want to run them down their rows. I want to see just how far off from level from each one they are. We had some shrinkage with the concrete tube forms and I'm curious to know how much we have. Did they all shrink at regular intervals? Are there some that are super low or super high? I don't know, but I think pulling the string line right over top of all of them, pulling it down tight towards the ground, is probably my best bet to get a visual and really see what has really happened, good or bad. So let's disassemble the batter boards, then we'll pull some strings. <laughs> yeah, literally, I'm gonna pull some strings. I got my string lines out and things are looking better than what I feared. <laughs> That's good, very, very good. So the wood line, this whole row of nine piers, they are all dead on with one exception, but it is only one eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter inch at most lower than the rest. That's okay, that is good, especially compared to the other side. So this other side, out of all nine, we have two that are quarter inch lower and one that is five eighths inch lower and that five inch shorty that little oompa loompa of a pier second from the front right where i'm going to see it <sighs> isn't that how it always works out couldn't be the one back here nobody's going to notice oh no no it's going to be one right here for everyone to take in and ask sam what happened there <laughs> wabi sabi that's what happened I guess on a positive note, it's not the front corner. It could have been worse, so I better hush and be happy with what I've got. I have looked around all of my scrap piles, <laughs> and I have a few, and I don't have anything that offhand is going to work for shims. I also don't know what kind of shims that we're going to need for the structure. Okay, that's going to lead me into spilling some beans, telling you guys ahead of time that uh, this structure that we're having built, yes, there's some beans, on top of these piers is a steel carport. We went around and around, looked at price kits, looked at pole barn kits, looked at DIY options, and looked at, you know, pay somebody else to do it options. There is nothing to give us the covered square footage and the height that is almost as economical as doing the metal carport kits, where you go to a, you know, a dealer or a company, and you tell them what you want, pay for it and all that stuff and they come out and build it themselves. The closest thing we got to was a de complete DIY pole barn kit and that is like we're doing everything. We are pouring footers, we are putting anchors in the footers, we are putting posts, we're erecting steel trusses, building everything ourselves. That versus the option for having a company to come out and build a carport was $400 cheaper. $400 labor 
between the two structures. Now given, there is no doubt there is going to be a difference in construction, build style, and aesthetics between the two. But for us, what we're looking for, what we have eventual plans to do, which is enclose in the sides, make the long sides enclosed, there was no better option for us than a metal carport. So, beans have been spilled on this video, but hey, if you're here at this point, you're worth spilling some beans on. So, what that means is I need to figure out um, if the company is going to want metal plate shims, are they going to want me to use asphalt shingles to make up the difference, are they not going to really care, <laughs> are they going to want wood, so yes. Um, it's too late now because it's in the evening. I'm going to reach out to our sales rep, project manager for this, and tell them what we got. Say, hey, out of all 18 peers, we've got four that aren't playing nice and one is just a complete loser. What would you like me to do as far as building up shims to make this perfectly level? Or what is your tolerance as you're used to working with? This whole project, us doing peers, we're the first ones to ever do this with the company. So we've already been forging new territory, boldly going where no one has thought to go before, I guess. So we've been working closely regardless on this project. So it'll be um, interesting to see what they say. For the most part, these piers look pretty spot on, nicely and level. Although each row has its like Friday five o'clock out of whack, totally in left field pier that is not lined up. So whatever, again, wabi sabi. There's always gonna be something that doesn't work out great. <laughs> And given the fact that we have never done a project to this scale, I've never poured concrete footers and piers like this before, it, or something that's 800 square feet, laying out lines and everything, I still feel like it's pretty good. Okay, that's about all I can yak about on this for tonight. I'm happy with what we do have. I am pleased to see that they're not all just crazy, and I've only got one really bad one to fiddle with, and then two or three others to, you know, if I want to, finagle a little bit. I'll call the company in the morning, talk to our sales rep, project manager, and hey, we'll go from there. So the next day, I called our project manager for this, explained to him the issue, said, hey, one of my footers is five-eighths low. I got three, around a quarter inch maybe or so, and he said, cool, great, no problem. <laughs> but then I said, well, no, it's kind of a problem to me. I want to make sure the frame is sitting flat on all of my peers. So we got to thinking and brainstorming and came up with a solution. I then went and made a purchase, and that purchase just arrived in the mail. So I have a delivery here from a place called McMaster Car, which if you've never heard of, it is like the world's most epic online hardware store, where you can order pretty much anything as far as raw material, mechanical components, structural things, and anything nuts, bolts, assembly, and metal. It is a very cool site. So I just got in several different thicknesses of some six inch by six inch aluminum plate solid aluminum these happen to be my quarter inch thick plates they're six inch by six inch solid aluminum and these are what we'll use for shims so let me go ahead and get these out i still got my string lined up it's been up here for a couple of days we'll go ahead and sit these out see how many shims we need how they work out and get everything dead on Well, that's a bunch of awesome sauce right there. If you didn't know what awesome sauce is, it is some aluminum stock on top of concrete piers out in the dirt to make everything nice and level and ready for install. So I ended up buying one 5 8 thick piece of stock. I went right up here at the Wabi Sabi Maximus there, filled up that gap perfect, perfectly nice and level with that string. And then I used two quarter inch ones on this line and two quarter inch thick on the back line. Everything's now perfect. I also ordered a set of, looks like three eighth inch. Didn't need them, that's okay. We'll go to the workshop, there's no telling what use will come out of these next. And then I have one extra quarter inch left over. So I guess all in all, I didn't order too much. I definitely have enough for everything we need. Plus if something gets crazy wonky here on project build day, I've got some extras to throw at the guys and say, here, make it perfect. 
in real time we are exactly one week away from that so today is a tuesday it doesn't matter what tuesday but it is a tuesday and one week from today is when our scheduled installation is to begin they think they can get it done in one day but they said if nothing else we'll start on tuesday and we'll finish when we finish in the meantime i don't plan on just twiddling my thumbs too much what i actually have already scheduled is for tomorrow which is a wednesday to have a literal dump truck load of gravel uh, they can call it crusher run now, other places will call it road bond some people call it gravel and chat mixture either way they're going to drop i think 20 tons right here in a big old pile i'm going to get the tractor out and we're going to give ourselves a nice gravel place here inside the future carport tractor shed and just knock out some more stuff before the carport gets put here and actually is a really smart thing so i don't accidentally hit the carport with the bucket or anything crazy so next up will actually be some gravel work while we wait for the actual assembly to take place if you guys got any questions or comments leave them for us down below hopefully you enjoy this remember if you're just here plop and drop on this one video for whatever reason maybe you're looking for some awesome shims to how to shim a carport on concrete pier foundation which is really weird hey glad to have you there's a link to a playlist down below to show you everything leading up to this point and of course that same playlist link will take you on into the future to whatever this place actually becomes take care we'll see you guys next time on the homestead